around three years ago, we made one of the more consequential decisions that we have made as far as how it will affect us. We put solar panels on our house. We're gonna to talk to you about what three years with those solar panels have meant to us and how it's, how it's affected our normal everyday budget. Near the end of 2021, we had had our house paid off. Uh, we paid it off like in the spring of that year. And in the win early winter of 2021, there was a massive winter storm that affected Texas, made national news, took power out, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And we were looking for improvements on our house. We had decided to uh, not sell it and get into something and get into a newer house. We decided to improve the one that we had. Uh, the winter storm made it necessary to completely have the house replumbed. So we went on to the next improvement, which was? Well, we definitely needed a roof um, and we'd always wanted solar panels. So we were able to find a company local that could do both. And we were able to find a, a loan. It was a government incentive loan, low interest that allowed us to roll all of it into the same loan, which is not a mortgage. And that was very financially beneficial for us. So we decided to get as many solar panels as we could. And the extra that we were allowed on top of the cost of the solar panels paid for our roof, including a six foot all around roof extension. So why did we need a new roof? because the house was old and we we, we weren't really going to be able to put solar panels on it until the roof was replaced and why did you specifically want solar panels on our roof uh because i'm an eco freak and i just like sustainability and environmentalism but also um it is nice to think that uh, we could continue to have power when even when the power grid is out it's, you know, the sun still shines, even if the power grid is out, and it just seems kind of dumb not to be able to make use of that power. Now, the, the interest rate that she was talking about was about 1.9%, so it's an extremely low interest rate. And we ha put this six foot roof extension along the roof. So it was a brand new roof, plus six more feet of roof in each, each direction mm -hmm. uh, to give us some more shade during the Texas summers, right? Yeah. Um, but that extra roof was kind of pricey. Mm -hmm. And as it turns out, to get that interest rate, we had a price cap that we could not go above. That was $75,000. As it turns out, that roof was gonna be a third of that. Mm -hmm. uh, so we put as many solar panels as we could afford within the price cap, which ended up being 52 solar panels on our roof. 52, that's a lot of solar panels, you guys. The only question that I got from you guys about our solar, uh, you guys wanted to know is, did we have a battery? Did we put in a battery backup? And if short we, answer is? Short answer is no. no. If we had really wanted to stick with the, the self-sustaining and, and being able to have our electricity regardless of what condition the texas grid was that would have been a high priority but our a higher priority for us was the roof itself and the roof uh took up any of the extra room that we could get in the loan yeah, we the, just didn't have enough loan left to add in a battery backup. Yeah, bottom line was we couldn't we had to choose between the batteries and the roof and obviously we had to have a roof had so, to have a roof yeah. now the we're, we're thinking of ways to put a battery back up in there after the fact. We still want one. We're, we still want one and it, it's still on the to-do list. It's not on the up and coming immediately to-do list. Um, but the other concern was I had gotten uh, intrigued with electric vehicles also in 2021. I got to uh, test ride a Harley Davidson Livewire, had a blast on it, never ridden an electric motorcycle or driven any kind of electric vehicle that could do highway speeds before. Um, Ford introduced the F-150 Lightning. I got a reservation on it and we wanted to have enough power to, generated from our solar panels to uh, run our house and charge an F-150 Lightning with a 98 kilowatt hour battery for as much as I would drive it and still be producing too much, especially when we found out that our electric provider would pay us at the end of the year for the electricity we generated that we didn't use. Mm -hmm. Not all energy providers have the same deal, so be sure you check your local energy provider. We're lucky we're in a co-op, and so we got a pretty good deal. They, they pay for any excess energy that we produce at a wholesale rate, um, so it works out well for us, but this is not the case everywhere. They pay us less than what we would pay them, I think. They mm. pay us 14 cents a kilowatt hour. If we were just paying them, we'd be paying them 17 cents per kilowatt hour. Right, but there are other places where they'll pay you less or they find ways to not pay you at all. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, now, over the last three, so we got the solar panels installed mm -hmm. and 
immediately got the Fiat, like within a week. That's right. And yeah. the Fiat 500e. And our electric vehicle fleet has grown uh, in those three years. Um, so what's, what's our bottom line? Well, the, uh, what, what you probably want to know is if we didn't have the solar panels and we were driving regular gas-powered cars, would we be spending less money or more money than we're spending now on the price of the solar panels plus the price of the electricity that we use to, to fuel our cars? Uh, and the answer is... The answer is long, so this is I'm going to start a new chapter in the video here for this. This is uh, where it's going to come down to the cost savings. Now, whenever I comment about our, our solar system it's weird to call it a solar system yeah. our, our solar electrical electricity solar <laughs> you know what i'm talking about our solar anyway, panels <laughs> um to uh the for people always say who are especially if they're naysayers and, they, and they're very against solar energy is those will take forever to recoup your cost oh they do so say that. They, they say that all the time and mm -hmm. it's it's it depends on what your mindset is if you're looking at the total cost uh, it's going to take a while. If you look at monthly expenditures, it's immediate is for when it's going to it recoup is. its cost. Yeah. So let me let me break it down. Uh, so for the calendar year of 2022, our roof with 52 700 watt solar panels on it generated 25.6 megawatt hours from February, uh, the beginning of February 2022 to the end of the year. Through the entirety of calendar year 2023, 26.4. Entirety of calendar year 2024, 25.2 megawatt hours. And as of this morning, 1.4 megawatt hours so far in January uh, for, the, for the final month of January. So since they've gone online, or actually since our monitoring app went online, which was about a week after the solar panels did, uh, we've generated as of this morning um, oh no I lost my number I think it's a little over 78 megawatt hours mm -hmm. um, now at the at the rate that the wholesale rate that our electricity provider would pay us for that's about eleven thousand dollars worth of electricity so if you're looking at how long does it take to uh, recoup your cost from the solar panels? I told you it was about a $75,000 loan and it was a $50,000 project for the solar. Mm -hmm. So if we just say the 50,000, $11,000 over three years, it's gonna take you a little less than 15 years to recoup that cost. Now that doesn't sound good, does it? It takes 15 years to get that back and then afterwards it's a return. Mm -hmm. But what are you spending in that 15 years? So what Rachel had said was we, um, look at how many miles we drive mm -hmm. uh, we have three our electrical use is high because we have three electric vehicles that are used as daily drivers for three people right and plus an electric motorcycle that is used for some recreation mm -hmm. um, and the three daily driver evs probably rack up conservative number would be 3300 miles in a month that's mm -hmm. with my commute five days a week of 60 miles your commute of 40 mile round trip a couple of days a week our son's commute of 40 miles five days a week mm -hmm. uh, plus occasional trips into the metroplex uh, grocery runs not even taking into account any longer driving distances so just just driving around town about 3,300 miles uh, in a month uh, now if just for the sake of easy easy math <laughs> If we were all of us driving internal combustion engine gasoline powered vehicles that were capable of 30 miles per gallon, that's 110 gallons of gas. Yeah. Okay. 110 gallons of gas at the best price that I saw around here, according to Gas Buddy, was $2.73 uh, a gallon. And that's actually low in like a 10 year average. That's pretty low. Right. Which uh, comes out to uh, right around 300 bucks about $300. I'm, I made notes and I'm having a hard time reading my notes, but uh, right around $300. So that's how much we would spend on gasoline, but the solar panels are about electricity. Uh -huh. Well, that electricity is the fuel for our cars. Uh -huh. um, now, as far as our power usage, and this includes refueling our cars, um, based off of what our, our power, our, elect our utility provider says, if we were paying for our electricity, because we we overproduce by about it's on here somewhere. Um, yeah, we overproduce by around three megawatt hours a year. Mm -hmm. 
is m three megawatt hours more electricity than we use even with all of these EVs. Um, but if we were paying for our electricity and still charging these EVs and did not have any solar panels, mm -hmm. our electric bill would be about $295 a month. Now that's based on how much energy we used in the calendar year of 2024 alone. Mm -hmm. But let's compare the those average, two numbers real quick. Hang on, let me finish. The okay. average per month cost would be $295 a month plus the $300 uh, that we would be spending on fuel. Right. Right. Well, that's what I wanted to say. Like the 295, that includes fueling our vehicles. We would have spent more than that on fuel alone if we were driving gas powered cars. Right. And this includes also all the power for our house. So $295 is what we would pay for electricity. $300 is what we would pay for fuel. Our payment is $400. It's really 403. Mm -hmm. And a third of that is paying for the roof. Right. The, the, the new roof and the roof extensions that had nothing to do with the, the solar panels other than making the solar panels possible to install. Right, right. So just looking at those average numbers, uh, if we figure that we're, we're paying uh, two thirds of $400, which was uh, about 270, uh, is two thirds mm. of that is what's paying for the solar panels mm. plus fuels, um, yeah. And then subtract our fuel savings, we're saving a tremendous amount of money. It, I think it's, let me back up, it's $192 a month savings even if we factor in the full monthly payment on the system, including the roof. Right, right. So it pays for our electricity, the fuel for our cars, and our roof, and still saves us $192 every month. Mm -hmm. So that to me is day one, you're starting to recoup your costs. Well, yeah, it eases up money in our budget. Our monthly budget literally has $192 more in it than it would have if we hadn't done this whole electric project. If we were just continuing to pay for electricity and pay for gas, we'd be paying almost $200 more per month just to keep things the way they were. And the fact that we did the solar project and got the electric vehicles means that our monthly budget now has $192 more in it for us to spend on other things. We, I, I usually eat that, <laughs> um, but not, not, not entirely. I mean, we got a couple of iPads now yeah, and we got the fancy camera, yeah. but, um, so if you're, if you want to think of it as how much, how long is it going to take to recoup the total cost? It's going to take about 15 years, but if you want to look at when you're going to notice saving money, it's going to be the first time your electrical, uh, your electric bill would come due. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and it's just going to continue from there, especially if you live in a place that's sunny, like, mm -hmm. we, like we do. This is the first of February that we're filming this, and there's not yeah. a cloud in the sky. It's 70 degrees. Yeah, we, we generate a lot of power. We live in a sunny area. We live in a rural area where there isn't a lot of shade from trees or buildings. So our situation may be different than yours. Not everyone is going to have the same savings that we got. Now... In that three year time, there has been an electricity rate increase through our provider. It went from the, the wholesale rate they, uh, they would pay us back was 11 cents an hour. That was when and we what we would pay them was 14 cents an hour. And mm -hmm. each one went up, has gone up by three cents a kilowatt hour mm -hmm. in that amount of time. But we don't care because mm -hmm. our monthly payment that pays for our roof and our solar system stays the same. Right. And even if the electricity rates climb, it's not gonna climb for us. Right, right, that doesn't matter because we're not actually paying for electricity, we're just paying for our solar panels and that price doesn't change. Exactly, and that, other, it's not gonna change until it's paid off. Yeah, the other thing that I love about it is that we don't care what gas costs. <laughs> we don't really pay attention for the most but, part because it doesn't matter. <laughs> but that's a, that's a topic for another video that yes, we're gonna have <laughs> next week. So since we're coming up on the three, this is the three year anniversary of our solar panels, how has it changed uh, our normal lives? Well, we sh we're saving money. Um, and I love that we got the roof extensions because it does make it cooler in the summertime. It's nice to have the front patio. It really is. Uh, and uh, overall, I'm really glad we have them. I it makes me feel better when people start talking about what are you doing to save the environment? This may not be much, we're not saving the world, but at least we know we're not contributing to more fossil fuels pump being pumped into the environment. We're doing the best we can to uh, reduce our carbon footprint. And we're using less electricity than we create that goes back into the grid. So because 
because we're helping our neighborhood generate some power, I kind of think we're helping our neighbors out a little bit too yeah. on those high demand days yeah. uh, that's, uh, that are usually gonna come in the summer when we're, our generation is gonna be through the roof as mm -hmm. far as, as solar uh, generation Literal. during June and July. Um, but so we're, we're, I kind of think that we're helping our neighbors out a little bit because we're putting electricity into the grid right, right. instead of helps, taking it out. And that can help reduce the cost. Right. Exactly. For everyone. So that's those are our thoughts. If you have any uh, any other thoughts or questions about solar, let us know. Uh, next week we're going to have a video about what three years of EV ownership has taught uh, to us. Uh, so be sure you subscribe so you see when that video comes out, and we'll see you then. Thanks. Bye.